This is Henry with FireX Techs. Today, I will show you how to install what I think are the best overlays for the RG35XX family of devices. They are known as the perfect overlays, created by one player insert coin. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. These overlays are for games running through RetroArch, so they will not work with standalone emulators. Furthermore, I have put this video together to make it as simple as possible for devices running on the MuOS custom firmware. These overlays are not limited to just MuOS and will work with other firmware or even other devices outside the 35XX family. For an example, they also work great on the RG405M or the 405V. The main requirement is that the screen needs to be 640 by 480 resolution. This pack will not work for the Mio Mini Plus, but Onion OS 4.3 comes with these perfect overlays installed already by default. Another thing to note is that these are non-integer scaling overlays. I know after hearing that, some people may just have thrown up in their mouths, but I really do think that these overlays, even if not pixel perfect, come closer to emulating the original look of the device at a normal viewing distance, while also utilizing more of your device's screen. I recommend, at the very least, that you try them out. Lastly, I want to thank the people who created these overlays. One player insert coin for initially making these overlay grids for the Mio Mini and Mugwomp for making these overlays compatible with other devices and also adding some of their own borders. I will leave links to both one player insert coins, original Reddit posts and Mugwomp's GitHub in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get on with it. Okay, to install the overlay on your device, we first need to download the zip file from the MuOS link in the description. Do not unzip the file. Connect to your SD card, either through SFTP or an SD card reader. A quick little aside here, if you have never used SFTP with MuOS, it's really simple and I'll explain it in just under 30 seconds. Go to your Wi-Fi page on your device, make sure you're connected, and get the IP address that shows at the bottom. Then, on another device connected to the same network, open up your browser window, type in that IP address, followed by colon 9090, then hit enter. At the login page, type in MUOS, all lowercase, for the username and password. And that's it. You should now have access to the SD card without needing to remove the card all the time. If using SFTP, click on SD1, then Archive, and drag the zipped overlay file we downloaded into the browser. Select Submit, and then close the page when it's done. If you're using an SD card reader, navigate to the SD card, drag the zipped overlay file over to the Archive folder on the SD card, and when done, place the SD card back into your device and turn it on. Now that the zip file is on the device. From the main menu of MuOS, navigate to Applications, and then Archive Manager. Select the Perfect Overlays file and wait for the installation to be finished. Once completed, back out to the main menu and reboot your device. Okay, that's it for installing the overlays. Now we need to set up the overlays for the different systems. Let's start with the original Game Boy DMG, as this one kind of requires the most setup. The DMG overlay looks best at lower brightness levels, so turn down your brightness by holding down the menu button and clicking on the volume down button. Navigate to explore content and then find and launch a Game Boy game. I will be using the Gabate Core for both Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Open the RetroArch menu. The default hotkey in MuOS is the menu button plus the X button. Select Core Options and set GB Colorization to custom. Setting this to custom makes use of a color palette file that was included in the overlay zip file we installed. If you decide to use other overlays, you will probably want to set this back to internal. Enable interframe blending. You can set this to simple or LCD fast 
depending on how much fast forwarding speed you want to sacrifice for accuracy. If you're not a fan of ghosting, you could set this to off, but you may experience flickering when transparent game objects show on the screen, like shown here in Link's Awakening, you might be able to see the flickering on the chain of the chain shop. And when you enable this setting, the flickering of the transparent objects stop. Once that is set, go to Manage Core Options at the top and choose Save Content Directory Options. So we can save these settings just for the Game Boy. Then hit B until we get back to the RetroArch main menu, where we will then choose Settings, Video, Scaling. Ensure everything is off on this page and that aspect ratio is set to core provided. With that done, we can go back and select our overlay. So go back to the main menu, select Quick Menu, go down to On Screen Overlay, turn it on if it's not already, set Overlay Opacity to 1. As with many of these settings, you can change this to your liking, but starting off at the maximum of 1 is a good idea so you can kind of see what it looks like. Select Overlay Preset, select the option Parent Directory twice to back out to where you should now see a few folders, one of them being One Player Insert Coin. I do want to point out that there are other good overlays here that come with MuOS, and I encourage you to check these out, but for now, select One Player Insert Coin, select Perfect DMG, then DMG, Try different overlay borders until you find the one you like. You can do this by selecting one of the options, then hit the menu button and X to toggle the RetroArch menu, and that way you can see what the overlay looks like, and then just kind of repeat this process until you find one you really like. At the bottom is a version with no border art that only uses the grid, and there's also a folder here with options for only the borders and no grid if that interests you. Once you find the overlay you like, you can back out to the quick menu again and select Overrides. Here, we will select Save Content Directory Overrides to save these settings for Game Boy. If you like the look of everything, you can stop here, but with all of these overlays I will be showing today, you can make some final tweaks to the picture by using a shader. From the quick menu, Select Shaders, then select Load Preset. Go into the Perfect Shaders folder and select the Perfect Shaders file. Then select Shader Parameters. Here you will have many options to change the picture's appearance. Now, I don't have an original Game Boy and I have not used one in over 20 years. So I'm mostly going off inaccurate memories and nostalgia. I like to turn the saturation up some the luminance down some and turn the red channel up just a notch to make the screen a tad bit more yellow or olive green. I encourage you to experiment with these options, find what looks good to you, and remember that changing the brightness can also affect the screen's appearance. Once you have this set to your liking, you can go to Save Preset and select Save Content Directory Preset. Okay, now we're done with the DMG. If you're someone who wants to use the Game Boy Pocket setup instead of DMG, all the previous steps will be the same, but you will need to move one file around on the SD card. That file can be located in MuOS, BIOS, Palettes. Then here, delete the default.pal file, go into the GBP folder, copy the default PAL file here, go back one folder and paste it in this location. This will change the custom color palette to use the Game Boy Pocket one instead of DMG. The Game Boy Color is set up very similar to the original Game Boy, and it only deviates from the process a few times. So I will go through this one a little faster to not waste too much time repeating myself. So if you just skipped here and I'm going too fast, or you feel a little lost, Watch the original Game Boy setup first, and then come back. Launch a Game Boy Color game. Open the RetroArch menu. Select Core Options, and set GB Colorization to GBC. Color Correction to GBC only, and Color Correction Mode to Accurate. Just like the DMG setup, you can enable Interframe Blending, 
set this to simple or LCD fast. Go to Manage Core Options at the top and choose Save Content Directory Options. Then we can back out to the RetroArch main menu where we will then choose Settings, Video, Scaling, ensure everything here is off and the aspect ratio is set to core provided. With that done, back out to the main menu, select Quick Menu, go down to On-Screen Overlay, set the overlay opacity to 1, select Overlay Preset, select the option Parent Directory twice to get back to the One Player Insert Coin folder, choose that and select Perfect GBC. Now, like before, try different overlay borders until you find one you like. Back out to the quick menu again and select overrides and save content directory overrides. Just like the Game Boy DMG, you can add the shader preset if you want to make changes to the picture. From the quick menu, go to shaders, load preset, perfect shaders, and it's going to be the same perfect shader preset file for all of these. You can then go to shader parameters. Like before, I like to turn up the saturation just a little bit, the luminance down a little, but here I won't make any changes to the colors this time. Once you have this set to your liking, go to save preset, select save content directory preset, and that's it for the Game Boy Color. Let's move on to the Game Boy Advance. Just like with the Game Boy Color, to avoid wasting your time, I will go through the repeated parts quickly. So if you just skipped here and I'm going too fast or you feel a little lost, watch the original Game Boy setup first and come back. Launch a Game Boy Advance game. I will be using the MGBA Rumble Core. Open the RetroArch menu. Select Core Options. Like before, set your preferred interframe blending setting or leave it off if you don't like ghosting. Go to Manage Core Options, Save Content Directory Options. Back out to the RetroArch main menu, go to Settings, Video, Scaling. Now this part will be a little different than before. Change Aspect Ratio to Custom. And then Custom Aspect Ratio Width should be set to 640. And height, you will need to set this to 427. This should move the image to the top of the screen as these overlays have the single border on the bottom. Back out and select Quick Menu. Go down to On Screen Overlay and set the overlay opacity to 1. Select Overlay Preset. Select the option Parent Directory to get to One Player Insert Coins folder. Select Perfect GBA. Try different overlay borders until you find one you like. This time, there are a lot more options. Some without border shadows, some with the SP logo instead of Advance, some with lower opacity. You'll just have to try a lot of them, see which one you like, and once you've picked it, back out to the Quick Menu, select Overrides, and select Save Content Directory Overrides. Again, I will be adding the shader preset, Going to the Quick Menu, Shaders, Load Preset, Perfect Shaders, selecting the file, going to Shader Parameters. With the GBA overlays being a lot darker, I don't change much. Maybe a small boost to the saturation, a little less from luminance, kind of like before. But again, a lot of this is going to be personal preference. Once done changing things, go to Save Preset, and select Save Content Directory Preset. All right, that's it for GBA. The last overlays to go over are CRT overlays. They are different in the sense that unlike their previous ones, they're not specific to just one system and can be used for a multitude of systems. I'll use Genesis as an example here, but you will have to do this for each system that you want these overlays applied to. Launch a game for the system you want to set, open up the RetroArch menu, Go to On-Screen Overlay and set Overlay Opacity to 1. Select Overlay Preset, One Player Insert Coins Folder. Select Perfect CRT. Here, there are two options, a normal one 
and a 240p one, each with a choice of no frame. The 240p option will have twice the scan lines than the normal one, so it will have crisper details and better color blending, but at a cost of brightness. So on darker screens, you may want to not use the 240 option and just use the normal one. Here I'll select the 240p. The frame on the CRT overlay adds the rounded CRT bubble look, while the no frame will have more of a flat look. Once you're done here, back out to the quick menu and select overrides, select save content directory overrides, and I will add the shader preset like I did on all the other ones. Go into shaders, load preset, load perfect shaders, select shader parameters. This time, I think it looks good with just a slight increase to saturation, but again, tinker to your heart's content and then save preset, save content directory preset, the last thing to go over are video filters. These are not for everyone, as they will degrade the image by emulating old home console video adapter methods. Back out until you reach the RetroArch main menu, and then go to Settings, Video, Video Filter. Here, you will want to look at the Blarg NTSC Pseudo Composite RGB or S-Video. Again, these are for people who are trying to recapture a specific nostalgic look. If you want to set a video filter, just remember, you will need to go back into the override section located in the quick menu and save content directory overrides. While making this video, I learned that one player insert coins latest overlay is for SNES, which I added to this collection. This overlay can fix things like the Mega Man Life issue you can see here, which happens on the normal CRT filter. But while the SNES overlay will fix things like this, it can make text harder to read on some games, so it's not a fix-all. And you may want to use this on a per-game basis. Alright, that's it for CRT overlays and filters. You will need to do this for each system you want to have this overlay on. I think they look great on a lot of different systems. I hope this helps some people achieve the overlay setup they were looking for. Ultimately, there are no best overlays or shader settings, as the ones you will choose will be based on personal preferences. If you think you found or created something that looks really good, please feel free to share it either in the comments or come join the Discord and show it off. If you want to use these overlays with other firmware or non-35XX devices, I will have a non MuOS link in the description. I can't go through the process for each device, but basically you will want to put the folders located in the RetroArch folder into the RetroArch folder on your device and the palettes folder into your BIOS folder. And then all the other steps should be the same that I showed in the video. If you need any more help setting these up for a specific device, or if you have any questions or issues with anything in this video, let me know in the comments below or hop into the Firex Techs Discord, and I will try my best to help you there. All right, that about covers everything. I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. And as always, thank you for watching.